welcome, welcome. What's good? It's your boy, Relevant. We are in here on this fine day. I'm excited to be able to, to do another episode for the travel vlog. Uh, do me a favor, before you uh, we even get started, hit that subscribe button below if you haven't subscribed already. Hit that like button, leave a comment, introduce yourself. Uh, let me know where you want to travel to. Uh, if I've been there, we're going to talk about it. If I haven't been there, I'll schedule a trip and I'll go there and stream it so you can go there and experience it uh, with me and together. So, I appreciate all the support. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and comment below, and we're going to get started. Um, super stoked to be able to, to tell y'all the story about this trip the latest trip that we just went on is atlanta and miami i have a client by the name of katherine uh, katherine is a new artist never recorded in the studio before but she's ready to, to take that next leap and to get her, her foot in the door and start working and building what it's going to need to be built to be a successful artist so the trip starts with that. Before that even happened, before her and I even started working together, I was already planning on going to Atlanta. Once her and I decided to start working together, I felt like it made sense for me to go out there and do a session with her. Like, why the heck not? would I not want to go jump in the session and uh, cook up in live in the spot and, and have some fun and travel and go to uh, Miami because that's where she's located. So I'm like, all right, well, we going to uh, South Beach, man. They're taking our talents to South Beach. I go to Atlanta, I fly out, I get there, jump in a lift, go to the Airbnb, I'm waiting for Crash. Crash is supposed to be meeting me in Atlanta. Uh, his flight got delayed, so Crash ended up coming way late. Crash came at like midnight that night. Uh, I had a, a business call, so I posted up at the Airbnb. I ordered some fire food. I ordered a jackfruit pulled pork sandwich with fries it was fire um i forget where it was from but it was real good um next day had the studio book we booked um icon studios in atlanta and this is where we're gonna be cooking up for the day it's the office stream we got a couple people popping up a couple guests indeed i will hopefully my boy calvin the great Man, we made so the first we made three beats. The first one was cool. It was like a warm-up beat. We also had some technical difficulties getting set up. Warm-up beat, cool little vibe. I had a it's a writer, 88 Soul, my guy Jay. I met him out here at a studio through a and r at Warner, and the the a and r was was had a writer. This this guy 88 Soul, he he was kind of introducing the people. So I met him at uh, I went and pulled up and, and met him. And then, uh, so I stayed in contact with him. He's based in, in I think he was in, actually in Tennessee, but he had just moved to Atlanta. So I tapped in with him to have him pull up. So I was like, man, look, you know, it's supposed to be a couple people on the way. We was supposed to be getting weed delivered. It was, Fast Life was supposed to be pulling up. You know what I'm saying? So we already had people kind of like, you know, on the calendar to pull up. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of was like, man, look, you know, we do got a couple people on the way. Cause the weed is supposed to be coming and he gonna work, you know, too. So we gonna cook up and then he like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna slide later then. I'm like, all right, bet. So nobody show up. Fast life don't show up. My other people don't show up. So me and Crash, we just, we like, all right, we finna cook up. Cook up, go live on Twitch. Um, make the warm up track. Second track, uh, so the dude, 88 Soul, he told us the, the A&R at Warner needed some Afro beat type tracks, you know what I'm saying? So we needed to, to get some Afrobeat type stuff. And so we made we made one, we started one, came out super vibey, you know what I'm saying? Super, super, I like, I love, love, the, the, love the beat.
that one, that shit, I really like that beat. That beat came out crazy. I didn't know where it was going to go. Because Crash was, Crash started it with a, like a very interesting sample. And I didn't know where it was going to go. But then once it went to where it went, I was like, ooh, this shit is tight. So, yeah, made the beat. Next thing you know, it's like 9 o'clock. We got one more hour, and 88 Soul and his girl pull up. Man, he heard the beat in like 15 seconds. Pull out his phone, pull out his voice memo, start singing his melody. Melody's fire. I'm like, yo, 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 that's it right there, bro. I'm like, that's fire. Like, you might as well go ahead and start writing to it. So they wrote to it in like 10 minutes, wrote a hook to it. Jumped in the booth, recorded him doing the hook. Hook came out super tight, you know, definitely a vibe. Um, happy that he pulled up because it definitely that was that was fire. Finished up there, had was supposed to meet up with my boy Calvo. You know what I'm saying? I had to go see my guy, I had to go pull up on him and say what's up. I hadn't seen him in a while. Anyway, he was part of the reason I went to Atlanta, because I wanted to go tap in with a few people. He was one of the people I wanted to go tap in with. So we tapped in. Man, man this dude played us some beats and some songs of his. He, look, Calvo, one of my favorite producers. Calvo produced Like a Boy for Sierra when he was like 19. He was 19 and made a beat that tight. 
He imagine how he tight. Think about when that song came. Imagine how tight he is now. Yeah, that's hella cold. That's yeah, that, shit. that dude. He like one of my favorite producers, bro. And that's one of my favorite Sierra songs. Uh, and I like Sierra. So, yeah, this dude. He had this crazy keyboard in there. It was like a chord keyboard that looked super wild on some alien stuff. I definitely want to get one. It, it was like a chord board. It was super tight. Uh, we in there vibing. We played him the track from the studio. He loved that track. He playing the stuff from his artist project that he been working on. He got some super crazy records that he working on as an artist. So I was happy and proud and fortunate to be able to hear his stuff. I just thank God she survived. It's like counting money take away my anger and my guilt. And good come to those who wait, but that ain't how I feel. I was taught to go get it, stack them commas, ain't no limit. It's a rush with a feeling, just like mama, I'm a dick to Iron Man. I'm impatient. Can't wait on that money, gotta chase it. Too real to entertain the fate. Bottles in the air if you relate. Are we supposed to? I had a flight in the morning. This dude crashed. <laughs> Wouldn't we wouldn't leave? I'm trying to leave. Crash just want to hang out with Calvo. We having he having so much fun. I'm like, bro, my flight at like seven in the morning. It's already like two. Crash like, let's make a beat. I'm like, Calvo, like, man, we we, we like, let's we, we can chill right now. I think he I'm with him, blew my ears out. He was like, then afterwards he was like. You know, I'm probably gonna go lay down. Y'all can stay here if y'all wanna. I was like, when somebody is, or when they somebody start cleaning up, if somebody start cleaning up, if somebody turn the lights on, if somebody tell you they go in a bed and you can you can stay the night and you can leave and you know, let yourself out. About that time, you know. That mean it's time to leave. <laughs> That mean it's time to leave. <laughs> so I'm trying to leave too. We hungry. We ain't ate. You know, it's already late now. We gotta get back to the Airbnb. I got a pack still. Bro, say fuck that. Bro, look. So we leave finally. We go to. I think we go to. Uh, <laughs> we go to Waffle House. All right, we go to Waffle House. It's two people, it's two dudes in there when we go in there. It's a lady that's in there, and then while I'm standing in there, the cook come walking in. So, I don't know what's going on, but I think the dudes had already ordered. They was just waiting for the cook to come in. Now, what I like Waffle House. Waffle House, to me, I don't know why. I don't know why, but like, I feel like the griminess of it make it like the flavor better. You know what I'm saying? It's and give it, like it's it. like you it's soul. The best food you know what I'm saying? I feel like the soul is real. It's more like authentic no. than like going to like Denny's or IHOP or something like that. It's like nah, man. Like I'm going to Waffle House, bro. Like every time. So I, I try to be on my healthy lifestyle stuff, but I do rock with Waffle House when when I can when I'm in Rome. You know. Uh, so the, the cook walk in. I'm standing there. I'm standing there for a cool little minute, and he kind of like prepping and doing stuff. I guess he working on their order, and I want to say it was some other people's order that was in like outside waiting or whatever. So he had a couple other orders that he was working on, but I can hear him talking. He talking to the lady, and the lady finally look at me, and she like, "You ready to order?" Uh, I, I make my order. Crash. Crash got a camera. He he been heavy on his photography shit right now, and he got a great eye. So Crash got a camera. It's to the two dudes in there. Crash started talking to one of the dudes. Next thing you know, he you know networking with him, vibing with him, telling him he can uh, you know he do photography and stuff like that. Asking if he's an artist, blah, blah blah, you know whatever. Dude, they vibing. Crash take his picture and stuff. He like, let me go to the car, get my camera, I'm gonna get a tight picture of you. You know, I'm gonna send it to you. I'm gonna get your info. Uh, you know, and I'm gonna send it to you. Both. So he networking. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hey, shit, you I love it, you know, and that's partially why we was out there. But at the same time, while he was doing that, he wasn't ordering. And the cook <laughs> apparently had been there all day by himself, and nobody had came to relieve him. 
And they said once he get to a certain hours, like they just go, they shut down the Waffle House. They'll close it because they've been understaffed. And he was like, yeah. And somebody was like, oh yeah, y'all y'all was closed the other night. And he was like, yeah, if we understaffed, like we ain't finna just stay open. Like we'll close because we don't have enough people to come work. And I've been in. He was. I've been here since seven this morning. It was like, it was like two two. And at, in the morning, the next day, yeah, like, and he was like, "I've been here." He was like, "You know, so so I'm shutting my, I'm shutting it down, because I'm shutting it down." You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and so somebody came in, and they was he was like, "Yo, I ain't taking no more orders," uh, you know. He was like, you know, so they was he like, "Damn, for real?" He was like, "Yeah, I'm not." So then Crash go like, "Yo, can I order?" And he was like, "Hey, bro." He was like, "Yo, like, yo, know I'm saying like." You been here like 30, 30 minutes. <laughs> I tried like fuck. <laughs> Damn, my God. <laughs> I for some reason I knew it was coming. <laughs> Be like, hey, hey, my fault you talking. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I'm like, God damn, bro. He remember I told you his flight got delayed too. So his flight got delayed. And then this happened, so he, he like, God damn, like he all hungry. I'm I'm like, my food coming. And he like, you order? I was like, yeah, man. He like, fuck. He like, all right, I gotta eat something, bro. I'm like, all right, man, I feel you. Like, we can go find some food. So he go to McDonald's, McDonald's closed. <laughs> so we like, man, I gotta find another. He was like, <laughs> he was like, let's just go to another Waffle House. It, it was another Waffle House, not too far. So we drove to another Waffle House on the way to the Airbnb. Get there, I stay in the car. I was like, I'm about to eat. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm eating. So he go in there, he order, I'm eating. I look over, he talking to some some girls. Next you know, his food come, he eating at the bar. I'm like, this dude, I'm like, I'm all tired. My, I got my flight, it's like three in the morning. I was like, I gotta uh, be at the airport at freaking, uh, I think my flight was at like 8.20, but I had to be there at like, you know, early to check in and stuff or whatever. So, um, I finished my food. I go in there. I'm talking to them. I'm hanging out with him and stuff, waiting to see what the move is. We finally, like, I'm the girl. It's two girls. I'm talking to one. She like, man, I'm trying to like, I got to work in the morning. I'm like, yo, I got a flight in the morning. I'm like, this dude is the reason I'm out right now. Cause I'm trying to I'm trying to go to the Airbnb and actually try to get a couple hours of sleep in. I'm tired, you know what I'm saying? I ain't slept with these bags under my eyes, you know what it is. So we like, let's just act like we gonna leave and see if they get up and like leave with us. So that's what we did, and they got up and we ended up walking out and then leaving. Get to the Airbnb, I got like an hour before <laughs> Yeah, I gotta leave. So I just freaking pack, lay down for like 20 minutes on my phone, order my lift. The lift came, she was weird. I had this weird lift driver. She like, first, I didn't know she was if she was coming, like on the app it said she stopped and I was just looking for a cool minute. And I'm like, yeah, you come, so I called. And she was like, yeah, I was like, yo, I was you nearby? She was like, yeah, I'm outside. And she's like, yeah, but I'm not there. And she's like, yeah, but you can see, I'm like, I'm not there. And she said something like a weird way, like a little attitude, like kind of like smart. And then like she pulled up and like I guess she was uh she couldn't open the door. She said she had like hurt her something something so she wouldn't uh doing something, but she asked me to get in on the other side or whatever. <clears throat> but she was like she was interesting. She was like, You want music or no music? And I was like, No music and she's like, Oh okay and she turned the music on and I was just like, Alright, alright. Oh, so she asked you. She wants music. You said no, she turned it up. Yeah, and she turned it on. Yeah, yeah. She was like, "You want music or anything?" Certain radio station. And I was like, "Nah, it's cool. Just, no music is fine." And she's like, oh, "Okay." And she turned some music on. And like we was driving, and she was like talking to herself. A couple like as we was driving, and like sometimes I felt like she was talking to me, but other times she was just kind of like talking to other drivers and stuff. It was interesting. And then it was, uh, you know, uh, I think. The way that we pulled up to the airport, I remember her like being in like a, the, the slow lane and not like pulling up to like where my gate was or whatever. So by the time I got in there, bruh, the airport line for security, the checkpoint, like to go in to do like uh, the security was dumb long, bro. And it was multiple lines. It was like four long ass lines. 
that funneled into one line because you had to walk past the dog and the dog had to smell everybody one by one. So as you, everyone had to wait for some other person to go first before they even got to the, the uh, like little detector shit. Bro, that, I sat there, I was like, I'm gonna miss my flight. I said, I'm gonna miss my flight. I know I am. I knew that I was to the point where I just didn't even allow it to make me mad. Cause I accepted it early. I said, I'm gonna miss my flight. Oh, there's no way. And I was kind of mad because I was like, I should have ordered it earlier. I didn't think that the line was going to be that long, yeah, bro. Right. I was like, dude, like, this is crazy. So, I'm looking at my, my phone because I'm thinking, like, I'm like, okay, I'm, we'll see. It's moving. Mm -hmm. But it's, I'm, I know I'm pushing it. <laughs> bro, look. Go through security. They asked if this my bag. Gotta run my bag again. The dude who take it and run it, he just, he get mad at somebody over there and get like real mad and like walk off and stuff. And I'm standing there waiting to, to see, wait him come back, say that I'm cool. So, and I'm like, kind of looking around. I, yeah, I'm like, so like, is my bag cool? Like. I look over, it's on this side. They just ran it through on the like the automatic side and it's just sitting over there. <laughs> I'm like, bruh. All right, all right, I go get my backpack, get my laptop, throw my stuff on, go get on the train. You gotta get on like a little tram to go to the gate. Get to the gate. My flight is at 820. It's like four people in line, they wrapping up. They like getting ready to stop so they like getting the final people on the plane I'm like alright cool I go give them my thing she's like what's your last name and she flustered she all flustered two black ladies she she's super flustered right she uh she like what's your name what's your last name I'm like King she's like alright she looked she was like you got King she was like oh we uh we like forfeited his seat or whatever and I'm like I'm like what you mean she was like oh you gotta be here 10 minutes before the uh, the, the the gate close and the, uh, before the flight time. And I was like, okay, so 10 minutes. The flight was at 8:20, so that means I have to be there by 8:10. Mm -hmm. I was there, and it was uh, I think it was like it was actually uh, it was actually 8:25, and I got there, and it, I looked at my so 8:15 would have been the cutoff. Right. It was 8:12. <laughs> it was 8.12 on my own, the time I say it's 8.12 I'm in, t I got, I'm before the 10 minutes, she say oh, your flight time got moved up 5 minutes so now you 2 minutes late <laughs> oh yeah, yeah and I looked at the thing and it was, they had it moved up to 8.20 I'm like, bruh Wow. Y'all moved the flight up and because of that, I can't get on the plane? What's five minutes though? Why and I was there. Why five minutes though? I was there though too. The bag claim, the line. I would have been there. I was there. But I knew, that's why I said I accepted it. And I missed it. It was That was it. I ain't never missed a flight before. That was my first time ever missing a flight. If you would not have accepted it, you would thought you was getting on that flight. And thought you would have made it. Walked up there, and her, she told you no. You would. Yeah. So bad. Cause I don't even know what to do in that 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 experience. I've never missed a flight before. I've flown a decent amount at this point, and I've never missed a flight. I've flown standby and missed a flight because it was full, but I've never had a flight that I booked and then got there and then something happened where I can't get on it no more. I'm like, what happens with my bread? You know, like what what do we do from here? And they're like, oh, you gotta go pick up that phone and talk to somebody. Next thing you know, I got on another flight two hours later. I'm like, all right, cool, so that's cool.